Hello and welcome again. Uh, in the previous video, I mentioned a little bit of the security of the Diffie-Hillman key exchange and how it is related to uh, computing uh, discrete logs in CPU start. So I gave you a chart of those um, records that had been computed in in the bit length of the prime corresponding to the date where they were computed. I want to say a couple more things about the security of this uh, key exchange. Now the next thing I want to mention is is this. Another uh, thing that you have to make sure that you do when, if you were to implement the Diffie-Hillman key exchange is that the prime factor, so p minus 1, should not be small. Uh, because if that is the case, if this p minus 1 has prime factors which are small, uh, about the order of, let's say, for example, 512 uh, bits and so on, they will be vulnerable to attacks. And one of the attacks is the Pauling Hillman attack, which I, we won't mention here. But basically, those attacks, what they do is they compute discrete logs not in base uh, P, but in other lower bases, and they will be able to compute discrete logs in that manner. So that's one of the security uh, requirements also for the Diffie Hillman. Not only that the prime T, P has to be. Uh, long prime. Also, the prime factors of p minus one cannot be small. Now, one other thing I want to mention, and I think this is very interesting, and there is a paper that was written in 2015 called "Imperfect Forward Secrecy: How Diffie-Hellman Fails in Practice." Now, this is a very interesting uh, uh, paper that was written in 2015 about a bunch of researchers in several really good universities or and one in Microsoft Research that talks about one of the flaws in the implementation of the Hillman key exchange. I want to mention a little bit about, about that. So they basically talk about an exploit in or some flaw in one of the implementations of the Hillman key exchange that allows the computation of discrete logs. And remember from the last video if you can compute the screw logs, then you basically can just get the key for the Diffie-Hellman key exchange. Um, that pro that flaw here, or the way they compute it, has a name, which is not important here. But I want to mention also some other things about that. Now, uh, the way that this is uh, done is doing this kind of uh, computing discrete log in lower bases, uh, which we won't mention here, but basically what they do is just comparing the discrete log for primes of certain length. Now, another interesting thing that I want to point out from that uh, from that paper, which you can get it online, just search on Google, is that if you have, uh, you can read all of this here. This is one part that is extracted from the paper there. And basically what I want to tell you from this is the, uh, uh, this. Uh, so this uh, DH1024, basically what it does referring to is uh, computing discrete logs of the Diffie-Hillman key exchange where the prime is 10, uh, 1024 bits long. And what they do is you can, can, you can do this pre-computation with certain machines, but it has a cost in kind of dollars. And the cost, they estimated that it's about $100 million, hundreds of a million dollars, if you were to do something like that. So it is computable, it could break it, but will require uh, some kind of agency or person to be able to invest this kind of money to actually go ahead and break this kind of uh, key exchange with the primes that are 1024, which actually are not small primes uh, for uh, what we consider today to be uh, big primes. So these are kind of medium-sized primes, which are okay for the Diffie-Hillman key exchange for now up to this point, of course, if you are willing to spend that money. Another thing that I want to mention here, and I think I'm going to finish this video with that, it's going to be a short video, is uh, that uh, article also has a section called uh, 4.2, and it says, is the NSA breaking the 1024-bit Diffie-Hillman uh, key exchange? Now, as I mentioned uh, uh, earlier, uh, the Diffie-Hillman key exchange, the breaking of that, it costs money, it costs $100 million to do that. So you can actually read what it says here. So there's no point for me to tell you what it says here. Uh, and 
one of the things that you can see there is the VPN protocol. These are virtual virtual private networks that are used to communicate uh, networks that are uh, basically connection between two computers where the communication is encrypted. And it is suspected here that the NSA is actually breaking all of these connections, meaning that they can actually see that encrypted connection according to what this paper says. It's not in my opinion. I'm not trying to give many opinions about what this is. It's just trying to tell you exactly what the paper says. So that's uh, pretty much all I want to say about the uh, security of the digital monkey exchange. All of this basically is pointing out the fact that all of these algorithms work until somebody finds a way to actually break them, either uh, doing some mathematical computations or doing some man in the middle attacks, uh, social engineering, or um, maybe investing a lot of money in machines that are specialized in breaking this kind of uh, algorithms and cryptography. So uh, that's all I have to say for the difficult monkey exchange. In the next videos, we're going to talk about an encryption algorithm that uses the idea of the Diffie-Hillman key exchange. So I'll stop the video now and I will see you in the next video.